These are my M1 based machines. The M1 MacBook Air, the M1 Max MacBook Pro, and the M1 Ultra Mac Studio. There's one missing in between, and we're gonna talk about that today. Oh, one of these will be replaced. Hello everyone, it's been a couple months since I've been using Mac products, and when I started this YouTube channel, that was not the initial plan. However, once I started using this MacBook Air, I was really surprised with the performance of the unit. So surprised because it beat my Threadripper machine and it's a machine that has no fans inside of it. With part of my channel being dedicated to travel, that portion is not yet taken off. However, I wanted to obtain a laptop that could handle the kind of video work that I was doing. While my Threadripper machine was, again, being beat by the MacBook Air, I wanted a desktop and I thought about, you know, which one to get. Eventually, of course, that led me to the M1 Ultra. The Ultra is a fine machine. I did a test on it and I was a little bit disappointed, but the more I start to use it, I start to realize that this machine is not being taxed by the kind of work that I do. So let's get this one out of the picture for now. And we'll talk about the laptops. So by now you deduce that that one is not going, it's gonna be one of these two. You know there are times when you have plans for something and it don't exactly go the way you want it to go? Yeah, that happened. And I'll say this, if you're not really in the market for something, sometimes it's best not to go check out the other stuff because it may change your mind. Okay, first, let's talk about the MacBook Air. When Apple introduced it back in 2020, they said it was faster than 98% of the PCs being sold at the time. And a year later, back in 2021, when I got it, yeah, I could say this machine was really, really fast. And those of you who own it realize that this machine can do a lot of work, more so than you were thinking for a lightweight machine with no fans. What does it lack? A bigger screen. While I figured out how to work with DaVinci Resolve and the small screen, I have to say, I always prefer working on this one. But since this one became my desktop machine and did duty in clamshell mode while connected to my 32 inch monitor, this one is one that's been seen in most of the work. You probably know where I'm going with this. I went to the Apple store the other day and I looked at the 14 inch MacBook Pro. I checked out the weight against this one. I looked at the 13 inch version also because I wanted to see you know, what the major differences were. You see the specs online, specs are one thing, but then you wanna get your hands on it and see what it's like. Well, after playing around with it, we like the size of the screen so much. So we decided that it was probably a better machine to be traveling with. So, well, let's take that out of the picture for now. We ordered one. My reason behind getting the 14 inch MacBook here is that it is a screen size in between both of these two laptops. It's not as big as a 16 inch, it's not as small as a 13 inch. Would I prefer something in between that's a little bit bigger? Certainly. And I did a video, you can watch it up here, where I talked about the need for a 15 inch MacBook Air. Because let's be honest with ourselves. This lightweight machine is great to carry around and the performance on it is wonderful. Guess what I heard this morning? Apple is considering making a 15 inch MacBook Air, but it's probably not gonna come out until next year. That kind of bites, because I was hoping that it'll you know, come out later on this year. If you haven't watched my video on the 15 inch MacBook Air, you should probably check it out. I talked about the things that we needed compared to the 16 inch MacBook Pro and why we need a smaller form factor machine that we can carry around that can give great performance as this MacBook Air. However, having a bigger screen means slightly small, sorry, slightly larger footprint and more battery. So overall, well, I should say in addition to that, also space 
to manage the heat. Because yes, some of us like a fanless design that can perform well. 15 minute videos or so, this is doing about nine minutes, while this one we can do between like three to five minutes. Hey, that's pretty good, right? That's not bad really when you think about it for a machine with no fans inside of it, none. So the M1 is performing pretty good, but getting an M2 chip inside of this one is gonna make it perform even better. Guess what I have here today? A MacBook Pro 14 inch. And we'll go with the unboxing right here in the middle of the video. Now I'll tell you this, I don't have any other cameras in here to give you any other angles. You've probably seen this unboxing before because it's not like it's the first one out in the market. It's not like I'm the first one doing this. This machine's been out for a few months, but it's still gonna be my unboxing experience. Uh, let's start. Mm. I've always liked Apple's packaging. They make it so much easier to work with. And there we go. Ta-da! A 14-inch MacBook Pro. And here we go. I won't take out the other cords, but what I did do was I got the 96 watt power adapter to go along with this one, just so I can have a little bit quicker charge. So we'll put these aside because we don't need them right now. So you're wondering now, which one of these machines are gonna be replaced? Guess which one? Put it in the comments, let's see if you can figure it out before we get to that portion. So here they are, stacked on top of each other. 16, 14, and 13. Now, I have to say, just looking at it from this perspective, the 14 inch isn't that much bigger than the 13 inch. The 16 inch is a massive upgrade. Would I want a 15 inch version? Definitely. But this is what we have. So to answer your question now about which one of these are going to be replaced, it is going to be, drum roll please, the MacBook Air. I talked a lot about the MacBook Air, I've done a bunch of videos on it. They didn't get as much traction as on my MacBook Pro 16 inch, and I guess it's because a year later. But hopefully you guys will check it out and see what I've talked about and my experience with it, with editing and so on and so forth, so you can get a better understanding of why I love this thing so much. So here we have the MacBook Pro 14 next to the 16 inch version. And I guess we started this way, you can tell the difference. If you've been watching other YouTubers sites, you've seen you know the comparison already, so I won't go too deeply into that. It's basically the same as far as it comes to ports and SD card slots and power. Main difference is screen, and of course in the 14 inch version, you can get you know the lower tiered um, chips inside this one. And speaking of which, this one comes with the 10 core, I'm sorry, eight core CPU and the 14 core GPU. Now you're probably wondering why didn't I go for the 10 core? Well, you know, if you're married, you have a minister of finance in your household. Mine also happens to be an accountant and I try to pull a fast one in her and say, yeah, we should go for this one. It's more for performance and so on and so forth. It's really her machine. She's really cost conscious when it comes to things. And she just flipped the script to me and said, well, you love the MacBook Air so much. You talked about how great the 8-core CPU was. This is a slightly bigger screen. And if the GPU for performance is what you want, that's going to have 14-core versus 8-core. So it's going to be a little bit more faster than the other one. And with your military discount, you get to save some money. And also, the trade-in on the MacBook Air. Oh yeah, the trade-in. I've been kind of lucky with getting you know good deals on these things. Sometimes I usually buy them out of the refurbished store. This one actually wasn't. This was a brand new. Speaking of the MacBook Air, that was a brand new machine. And I did trade the first version in and then got a credit. So the credit I got in this one was going to be $660 to go towards this particular machine and I did upgrade it to the one terabyte hard drive. So I'm also saving overall on the machine because it comes out to about two grand. 
Yes, even with, you know, adding the one terabyte hard drive, the military discount took it down a bit, and I'll have another 660 once I send the machine in. So, mm, we're looking at what, 13 and change before taxes. So, we were both happy with the prospect of those numbers. So, I'm gonna be testing out this machine and let you guys know how it performs. In my use case, again, I do mainly videos, a lot of 4K videos, so I want to see how that will work as my backup machine. Let's say you're on the plane and you want to edit a video while you're doing some long flight. This probably wouldn't fit on the tray very well, but this would. And while she's napping, I can edit. Now that I have each version of the M1 chip here in my house, I will do a test with all of them and to let you know how they perform. I'm expecting that even though this is a 14 core GPU, it should perform much better than the MacBook Air. And not quite gonna be in par with the MacBook Pro, but it should be somewhere in between. Right, so let's get into those numbers. So we have everything on the desk here. We have the Mac Studio with a small portable monitor, MacBook Pro 14, MacBook Air, and Mac Pro 16. So I did a test of the last video I did because I did record it in ProRes 422. And the render time was two minutes and 28 seconds because I did test it out on the Mac Pro to see how it would do with the higher codec. Two minutes, 20 seconds, not bad. The MacBook Pro, um, however, did it in two minutes and 54 seconds. Close, and that in my mind says, this is doing a much better job and either this is um, being held back somehow or we're not really stressing it that much. Anyway, we'll continue. The MacBook Pro 14 did it in 4 minutes and 46 seconds and the MacBook Air did it in 8 minutes. So we're talking, that's a good reduction in time there, 8 and change, 4 and change, 2 and change. So, so going from the MacBook Air to MacBook 14, there is definitely a reduction and granted this one as I mentioned again, it's going to be the 8 core CPU with the 14 core GPU version. So that's not bad. All in all, I think it's a pretty good um, upgrade in power, pretty good drop in render time. Knowing that this one also has um, ProRes encoders inside of it, it's definitely going to be something that is somewhat future-proof. Of course, it doesn't have twice as this one, or you know, four times like this one, but hey, for what we're doing, it more than is able to handle all the work that I can put towards it. So hopefully from this video, those of you who are on the fence, trying to decide which machine that you want to go with, this will give you some ammunition for you to decide which one is better for you. Here's my takeaway from all this. The MacBook Pro 16, as I mentioned with the M1 Max, it's overkill. It really is for most people. If it's something that you want to get to grow into, it's a good machine. Actually, it's a fantastic machine. The M1 Pro on the other hand, performance on it is very good. I mean, I won't say it's excellent, you know, based upon the fact that we can smoke it with something better, but yes, for what it is and the kind of performance that you're gaining from the base model, and yes, this is the base model. Only upgrade on it was the one terabyte drive. And for it to perform as it did in 4K video, 422, yeah, that's, that's great. So I hope this answers the question for some of you who've been asking me in the comment section, whether or not the 16 inch MacBook Pro or rather the M1 Max version of the MacBook Pro would be a good one to go for. Clearly, just this one test shows you that it is not a bad machine based upon what the, your workload is going to be. And remember, this is only 16 gigabytes of RAM. 
We didn't want to go high end. We just wanted a small bump over on this one. And it did it. I'm enjoying it. And this is just day one in, in utilizing it. Yeah, I know my wife's gonna look at me like, why you keep stealing my machine? But while it's a little bit heavier than the MacBook Air, overall the performance, to me, it's worth the upgrade. I'm glad you stuck to the end of the video. Thanks for staying with me. Subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up if you like it, and I'll see you in the next one.